Festival director Kosli kicks off 2019's Berlin International Film Festival with Who You Think I Am, a feature about a divorced teacher exploring the possibilities of social media. This character study with a strong female role happens to have main competition jury president Juliette Binoche as its lead. Another serious drama fueled by women power is MS Slavic 7. This generational family tale comes courtesy of dynamic filmmaking duo Dira Campbell and Sofia Bodanovic. To find out what is the talk of the town in Berlinale at the moment, let's turn to David Hudson, writer at Criterion Daily. Hi, David. Welcome to Showcase. So, tell me about the competition. Which films are there competing? Well, you know, the Berlinale rolls out its lineup in pieces, and by the time it was all rolled out, I think one of the first things people noticed is that there are three films from China, and uh, we don't know much about them yet. One of them comes from, I'm going to be butchering names, but one of them comes from Wang Quan, who uh, won the Golden Bear several years ago for Two Years' Wedding. And another one is from Zhang Yimou, who with one second looks to be moving away from some of the expensive historical epics that he's been making over the past several years towards something a little bit more naturalistic, like uh, the films that he started out with and made his name with. Uh, one second is about... Um, a cinephile in a village, and that's pretty much about all we know right now. So, but that, but that looks interesting. I think the the hometown or the, the 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 attendees coming here in Berlin will be interested, in particular in the German films. Um, Fatih Akin is back. He won the Golden Bear uh, several years ago with a movie called Head On, and his new one called The Golden Glove is set in the 1970s. It's uh, evidently a comedy. I've seen a trailer. The comedy looks pretty broad. We'll have to see how that turns out. Um, but it's about a serial killer and uh, based on true events that happened in his hometown of Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And also, for the first time, a Netflix-produced movie was selected for the competition. How is this perceived in the industry, you think? Well, yes, that it is one film in, uh, by, uh, from Netflix in the competition. That's uh, Isabel Quartet's Eliza and Marcella. Uh, compared to, say, the whole handful of films uh, from Netflix that played uh, last fall in Venice. And, of course, Venice got those films because they were kicked out of Cannes. I think, in general, that the clash between Cannes and Netflix gives people, uh, suggests that there's more hostility between the traditional film industry and Netflix than there really is. Um, filmmakers themselves actually appreciate Netflix a lot. If you, uh, Steven Soderbergh, for example, has a new film coming out on Netflix this week called High Flying Bird, and he has said many, many times, without Netflix, the film simply would not have been made. He'll have another one later uh, this year, too, called The Laundromat, based on the Panama Papers scandal. Martin Scorsese, his uh, next film, he'll we'll reunite him with Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. He'll be working for the first time with Al Pacino. It's a big, huge production, The Irishman. He, too, has said over and over again, without Netflix, it wouldn't have been made. The studios are making comic book movies, and other than that, uh, the focus in, in independent film has been on very, very inexpensive film. And that for, for filmmakers to make something in the middle like Soderbergh, there's nowhere else to go. Um, and I think that that clash with Cannes is a situation that's also pretty unique to France. It was the French theater owners who were insisting that we stick to the old rules where, you know, a film opens in theaters and then months pass before you're allowed to stream it. And frankly, this far into the 21st century, that's just really not feasible anymore. Um, this is obviously the future of the way films will be distributed. And it's interesting, just today in the New York Times, Professor David uh, Boardwell has a piece uh, in the opinion section about the year 1919. He was it's kind of the, the formation of the old studio system. And he's saying that when um, Adolf Zucker, the head of Paramount, was buying up theaters and basically creating this something you know called vertical in integration, where a studio makes a film and then also owns the theaters where they're shown, this system is making a comeback with Netflix and Amazon, and in probably a pretty short period of time, uh, we, all, we know that the studios will be rolling out their uh, own streaming systems too. So everyone knows that streaming is pretty much the future. Everyone knows that we have a very, very long way to go, 
but eventually we'll have a world where we can pretty much watch what we want to watch when we want to watch it. And Berlinale will showcase a good proportion of movies directed by women. How much do you think this is shaped by the international pressure after Me Too movement? I, don't, I, I do think that there are festivals that are reacting to that. Um, I, I just mentioned Sundance. Sundance had, it's, in its competition lineup, 46% of the films were directed by women. This is a conscious move in reaction to not just Me Too, but, in, but basically underrepresentation of women that's been going on throughout all of film history. Um, and it's paying off. Uh, also, I should just limit 36% uh, by filmmakers of color as well. Um, all four prize winners in Sundance this year uh, were directed by women or co-directed. And uh, so the Sundance also just announced yesterday that after all the votes were counted up, the audience favorite at, at the festival was uh, Knock Down the House, which is a documentary by a woman about four women running for Congress. So in, case, in the case of the Berlinale, I don't think that Berlinale needs to react so much because whenever Dieter Koslick became festival director, he very consciously announced that this would be a more political festival than it had been in the past. And representation has been always very important to him. So not only films by women, also films by people of color, films by, from, from countries that usually don't get represented in festivals. He's uh, got a section, he created a section, for example, called Native. This year it focuses on the films from the Pacific and the South Pacific area. Past focus points have been Africa. So Berlin doesn't have to react so much. Berlin actually has, relative to other festivals, a fairly good record when it comes to representation of women filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Thank you so much, David Hudson, for joining us on Showcase today. Thank you for inviting me.